No, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, first up, uh, I'm going to do this one. Um, coming soon to the Adafruit store. This is kind of a big deal because um, as Twitter has melted down and not been a place to share content, there's um, some places online that are better and some that aren't. And Tumblr was acquired by WordPress and we really like WordPress. They're open source, uh, the folks that run it are super cool and they have Tumblr and they're trying to do cool things with Tumblr. They're trying to make it an independent artsy place. And so we um, we have a Tumblr, adafruit.tumblr.com and we started talking to the folks that were like, hey, why don't we do some stuff together? There's a big keyboard community there. Um, Nick, who's at Tumblr, um, built a mechanical keyboard with some Adafruit stuff and we're like, we should do a, a custom key just like we did with Hackaday and GitHub and Microsoft. So this is um, coming out soon. These are renderings, but it'll look exactly like this. So we feel, yeah. we feel okay showing what this is. Um, so we're going to have some cool projects and more that we're doing with Tumblr, but this is just the, the start. Okay. Next up. Next up. Finally, back uh, in stock that we had this as a coming soon um, because we got the PCBs and then we didn't realize the PCBs had some silkscreen deleted. So we reordered the PCBs. Uh, now they're back. It's the um, RP2040 DVI Feather. Uh, this, would, this would have been um, shout last... out to Toddbot who's been doing some cool stuff. Cool with stuff. This too, yeah. So what is this? It's an RP2040 Feather. Um, it's got the RP2040 chip, eight megabytes of flash, uh, STEM QT, battery charging, all the feather pins, I squared C and analog and SPI. And on the end, pretty cool, is a full sized HDMI connector that has yeah. DVI output. It doesn't do audio, it doesn't do Ethernet, it just does video. Yeah. But uh, if you want to experiment with generating video from modern devices, um, this does actually work. And when we test it on our tester, we plug it into an HDMI monitor to make sure that the DVI signal is read by it. Um, it uh, we only have support right now for Arduino. We might have support for CircuitPython at some point, Look but right that. now it's just Arduino. But uh, Phil B, Pit Your Dragon wrote an awesome uh, Pico DVI library. Um, and you can see it just acts like Adafruit GFX. So if you've ever used any of our TFTs or OLEDs and you've used Adafruit GFX as the underlying library, it's the same. There's fonts, there's text, there's colors, uh, there's graphics, there's you know rectangle squares lines characters all that good stuff um, all the basis that you need to uh, do graphics and drawing and as far as the feather is concerned it's basically connected to a 320 by 240 uh, screen and that 320 by 240 is pixel double to 640 by 480 so you know the pixels are a little chunky um, but HDMI monitors every monitor supports 640 by 480 yeah. so it's a universal supported also, monitor we display. all have these dead monoliths hanging on our walls that have mm. nothing on them and we don't want to mess with put something on it because it's like internet connected and a bunch of nonsense and it's terrible you can turn it into art that you make yourself this is this is like one of the cool things and um check out the demo that todd's doing and then and, and todd bot says i can verify the dvi rp2040 feather is pretty bad rad we were going to call this uh feather cast but then it would be a little confusing yeah when I don't know. um so you can also use it with the pico sdk they have a lot of examples um the, the code that we have for arduino basically creates a frame buffer so you you draw to it as like a frame buffer and then it outputs that frame buffer immediately um if you want to have higher resolutions um, I think Pico SDK can like dynamically generate the signals faster, but you know, then you have to kind of be smart about like drawing each scan line um, as it comes yeah. out. I, I kind of recommend going with the Arduino library because it's simple. You don't have to try to like race the H sync and V sync. You just draw it and it, it outputs in the background on the secondary core. Um, but the trade off is it uses a massive amount of resources. It uses, I think, both PIOs, or maybe it uses at least one PIO. Um, and it uses 150 kilobytes of RAM uh, for 320 by 240 because it has to buffer the entire 16-bit color array. Um, and it uses one full core. Um, so, it, you know, you can't do this and a whole bunch of other stuff. But, you know, you can read sensor data. You can uh, do demo video scene synth, time. You can, you know, write little games um, yeah. that run on it as long as you're okay with not having access to both PIOs and you're okay with losing access to one core. And you don't need, you know, you only need like 30% of the RAM that's available. All right. Sorry to show tonight. Besides you, Lady, at our team, our customers, our community, and uh, all the things that make us all go and share and do things together is... 
Laura Fruit. <laughs> Laura Fruit. So this is the another RP2040 feather. You guys are going to see a lot of these because I basically did the design for it. And then on the right-hand side, you know, I swap out what yeah. the module or the yeah, circuitry module. is. Um, so the you know, Pico DVI had a DVI connector and circuitry. And this one has a Laura module. Uh, this is a um, SX1276 based. 900 megahertz so you can use it with 868 or you can use it with 915 it's kind of like right in the middle there um you just pick the antenna and then in software is how you tune the actual frequency output and uh the gpio that are left over from the feather are connected to all the dio on the rfm 9x module um you can connect there's a ufl connector so you can uh connect a ufl to sma uh, adapter and then connect any external antenna no solder required or if you're willing to solder a little bit uh these little low-cost spring antennas um you know one solder point and, and these antennas are very compact and um, they work great so this is good for laura you can run laura win on it laura win is a software stack that uses the laura protocol there's laura win stacks i think for arduino and pico sdk um not for circuit python at this time but you know you can just use laura as a long-range wireless so these are more expensive than the rfm 69 series they're like you know like five ten bucks more because they use this proprietary laura chipset it goes farther if you don't need that distancy or you don't need uh laura wan support rfm 69 works really great and again it's cheaper but you want to talk to the things network or um you talk on the helium network or whatever that uses laura or, or sidewalk i think is also laura um, sub gigahertz, you need to have a radio that has that proprietary radio modulation. Um, this will do it. The one thing that's nice is that we've had the 32U4 and Feather M0 versions of this Feather, right? So we've had the 32U4 LoRa and the M0 LoRa, but those chips are a little older, 8-bit micros or um, the SAMD21 doesn't have a lot of RAM. If you want to use CircuitPython with this radio, you now finally have enough space and memory and RAM to do it. This has eight megabytes of flash and 264K of RAM. So tons of resources available to, uh, you know, make your sensor network with uh, your LoRa radio. All right, and that is new products. Ooh.